Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back. So in today's case study, we're dissecting an interesting scenario. We have two different vehicle models, right? Birth in the same year by the same manufacturer, but guess what? Yet each of these demand a different approach in their key registration, okay? You would think a uniform manufacturer's year would mean a uniform uh, programming procedure for the vehicle, but that's not the case. And today I had the opportunity, it's a rare occasion where I get these scenarios. So I wanna show you how I was able to determine if the procedure was done through the OBD versus on the bench, okay? So let's jump into it. Today is titled, Dual Approaches to Key Programming the IM508 Case Study on a 2019 Jaguar F-Pace and a 2019 Land Rover Range Rover, okay? If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent Autel Diagnostic Consultant. I align people with the right tool strategy and I help them get the results that you see in this video. So if you would like to get your tool, head on over to alteltech.co.za and book the diagnostic tool consultation, okay? Now this is what you're gonna be learning today. You're gonna to discover which tools are used in this case study. We're gonna learn about the different immobilizer system on the Land Rover vehicles. And we're gonna discover two key programming case studies that demonstrate a different key coding approach to the same year vehicle. Um, and then we're gonna develop the skills to troubleshoot and overcome some common obstacles encountered during the key programming process and acquire a clear understanding of the workflow involved in registering keys on the bench for the Land Rover vehicles, okay? Now, these are the tools that were used in this case study. The IM508, the XP400 programmer, your APA106, your smart key, and a soldering kit, all right? Now, background of the case study. So the client works from home, all right? He purchased his wife a 2019 Land Rover Range Rover and he wanted to personalize it just by adding another key. So while he was doing the key procedure on the bench, um, he wasn't able to actually see the wiring schematic match up with the module he had on the bench. So that's when he sought off my expertise and I was going to you know, help him through the process. Okay. So before we jump into the actual footage of the uh, procedure, what I always would advise people to do when they're getting into key coding is to focus on a manufacturer, one manufacturer, learn their immobilizer systems for the early vehicles, the you know middle-aged vehicles, and then the new vehicles, okay? If you understand those systems, you'll have a, a better uh, idea on how to approach it, okay? So with Land Rover, they have something called an RFA module, which stands for Remote Function Actuator. And it receives the key fob signals for locking and unlocking other remote functions, okay? It's part of the vehicle's uh, ne uh, network for keyless entry and ignition security, okay? And it's typically located in the uh, rear trunk, okay? On the left-hand side, all right? Now, what my client did was he did some research. I have a, a video on this procedure and he thought you know, automatically that he needs to do it uh, on the bench. So he took out the module and he was just you know, showing me the menu on where to go. And uh, you know, he was telling me, Kurt, it's not really matching up. I don't think we can do it. So what I did was I did some research. I asked my engineer and they told me we could uh, possibly do it through the OBD. And that's what we're gonna do here, okay? So the first step I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, identify the vehicle, okay? So I go to automatic selection or manual selection and then I'm gonna pick the gear make and model. All right, and then we have a smart key. We're going to select that. All right, so we confirm the vehicle profile. And then from here, I'm going to go to the EMO status scan. This way I can just analyze the health of the vehicle, see the conditions of the modules, and see how many keys are registered in the system. Okay, 
So once we do that, you can see here, we got the fin, we got the health of our modules, and then you're gonna see the number of keys that are registered into the system, okay? So the next step we're gonna do, I'm gonna click the immobilizer matching option, okay? And on here, um, I'm gonna click the RFA replacement uh, function, and then I'm gonna go to the add key option, all right? And then we're gonna follow the prompts, okay? Um, if the key frequency is 315 megahertz, key learning can be done directly from the original remote function actuator, okay? All right, so this is just a prompt. We're gonna go ahead and click uh, okay. All right, establishing communication, performing UWB routine. All right, so number of keys learned in the system. Do you want to learn a new key? We're gonna click yes. Place the smart key in your hand, okay? Now, what I remember from doing this procedure, and you're gonna see here, the client, I think he got his keys from like Amazon or something. So uh, he had two keys. Um, I think when we're trying to do this procedure, the new smart key was not detected. We kept on getting this error, okay? So we're gonna repeat it again. Press unlock button firmly for four seconds. Put it in your hand. All right, press unlock button firmly for four seconds. All right, learning succeeded. Do you wanna learn the next one? Okay, I think we're gonna click no. Let me see. All right, place all working keys besides the gear selector uh, lever or in the cup holder. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we're gonna click okay. And then it's going to finalize and you know, just uh, make sure all those keys are uh, registered and working in the system, okay? All right, so we have number of key learn three, performing UWB routine, all right? And then learning successful, okay? So we're gonna go exit out of here. I'm just gonna scan the vehicle one more time just to see if the key has been registered. And as you can see here, at the bottom, it's gonna say number of keys, three, okay? Now, I'll tell you, this is a rare occasion, like I don't remember doing something this new through the OBD. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's possible, it, it does happen, okay? So, you're not gonna believe it, but this is the same client, okay? Um, uh, I'm not sure if he was doing this for his friend, if this was his own vehicle, but he's, he, it seems like he's balling with all these nice cars. <laughs> so, uh, 2019 Jaguar F-Pace had only one key. He attempted to clone the key and end up with the car not being able to start with the original key, all right? So that's when he asked for my assistance to get the right approach, okay? So with the F-Pace, um, and this is from Autel's uh, uh, wiring diagram, they said the RFA module is generally located on the right foot side or of the co-pilot or on the right side of the rear passenger seat. Um, for the 2018 F-Pace, it said this RFA module is on the right side of the rear trunk, okay? Now, when we logged in here, what I wanted to do was, uh, first he showed me the um, key cloning function route he took, and I told him, you know, that approach, you know, probably wasn't the best one to do at first. Um, and I said, let me just try to see if we can do it through the OBD like how we did the other one, okay? So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, you can see we got the VIN. I'm gonna go to Control Unit, RFA Replacement, okay. Or actually, I'm sorry, key, Keyless Entry System, and then Add Key. All right, so once we click that, add key, press the start stop button, and then click okay. 
All right, and then once we click OK, this function is used to learn new keys and will not affect the current keys learned and the ignition will be turned on automatically. So place all working keys besides the gear selector lever or in the cup holder. We're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, and then we're gonna click OK. It has the VIN. And then what you're gonna see, it pulls up the software version. Okay, unknown software version, perform the key learning, generate working key via the programming function. Okay, so I was explaining to him that it, even though we were able to do it through the OBD on the other one, this one, it's not gonna be that way. All right, so I said, the approach you're gonna have to do is you're gonna read the chip status. This will check the current status of the chip to see if it's locked or unlocked. If it's locked, then we're gonna go ahead and click the secured read write chip. If it's unlocked, we're gonna select the read write chip unsecured option, and then we can go with the start key procedure, okay? So that's what I was explaining to him here. And uh, I'm gonna just fast forward it, okay? We click the start key writing process. It tells us um, a little bit what it what's it's gonna do. And this is the menu where we need to read the chip to verify if it's a uh, locked or unlocked. And then we can click the appropriate action and then start the key writing process, okay? So once we did that, I showed him where the diagram was, okay, and um, I, you know, went over the procedure with him verbally so you could see it. Now with this client, he works with um, cell phone repairs, so he was like, Kurt, this doesn't seem so difficult. You know, I've worked with a lot of things that are way smaller than this uh, RFA module, okay? So I was like, well, look, I think you can do it too. You know, as long as you follow the instructions. And as, as I said, I have a video on this, this full procedure, you can do it. So that's what he did. And um, once we had that data, uh, he went, took the module out, went back home. And then um, I checked my email and he said, you know, everything was good. It was a great experience, okay? Um, so yeah, that was that. So the question is why sometimes I can register a key through the OBD and others on the bench, okay? With this particular uh, vehicle being the same year, it was kind of like, it was kind of odd, you know? So I would just say it's the vehicle security protocols, okay? So the choice between OBD and bench programming when dealing with the RF radio frequencies um, such as the RFA hinge on several factors, okay? One is the vehicle security protocols. Newer vehicles often have enhanced security features that may limit the ability to program the keys via the OBD as a measure against unauthorized access, okay? And then, you know, with the key learning process, a certain vehicle just, you know, may have a key learning process that can only be done by the bench, um, uh, when connecting to the RFA module. So like if we're using like the dealer software, of course we could do it with their software. They don't do this type of bench procedure, but um, some of these modules, as I said, as a security measure, they don't kind of want us um, easily doing these type of uh, key registration. So it really just depends on how high the security uh, protocol is on that particular module. Okay. Um, so how do we determine the right approach? All right. So if you don't have access to an engineer, um, the best thing you can do is check the vehicle coverage. Okay. You can see here for this, uh, Jaguar, it tells us, um, part of the modules is supported by OBD and it's all supported by bench. So, if you're not so skilled on um, bench work, you can attempt the OBD. At least you know there's probably a 50-50 chance that it's you know probably going to be uh, not not accessible for you to do. Okay, um, but you can try with the OBD first. Another thing that I observed 
was I was looking at the menu on the Jaguar when I went into the control unit and then I compared it to the menu of the Range Rover and you can see under the control unit this space is empty where here it's it's the start key writing process is there so what I'm thinking is what you guys could probably try is go to the control unit when you're working on these Land Rover vehicles and see if the start key writing function button is there if it's not there maybe that's an OBD uh, registration procedure if it is there the start key writing function then you probably have to do it on the bench okay so that's probably something you can do beforehand um, just to verify if it's a bench or OBD procedure okay and then um, give it a go go ahead and try to do the key registration the add key through the OBD um, if the uh, software doesn't allow you to work if you get the prompt when you're doing your add key registration then you know you have to do it by the bench okay so in summary understand the manufacturer's immobilizer system to leverage its architecture for effective key programming as I said before focus on one manufacturer study the immobilizer systems and the key registration process for the old vehicles the middle range vehicles and the new vehicles and that way when you get to the the vehicle that that's you know you need to do the key registration you'll have an idea of what you're working with what system it might have okay second verify key programming methods obd or bench via the autel coverage page when you go there you can kind of assess if it's if it's a 50 50 chance or if, if it's a hundred percent chance obd or bench and that way it will also help you on your approach okay and be prepared for alternative procedures if obd doesn't work then bench programming might be the only option to do it okay um, and then fourth check the chip chip lock status to choose the correct read write process before initiating the key programming on the bench okay so with that you guys that's pretty much it a uh, very interesting case study it never happened to me before <laughs> where uh, the same client had the same <laughs> high-end vehicle same year but there are different approaches but I hope you learned something and uh, with that I hope you guys have a good one take care